everybody, this is part two of the tail tutorial. If you want to be a rebel, go ahead and continue watching this. However, if you want to know what's going on, then click here to see part one. <laughs> now you have a nice oval shape. Take your extra string and scissors. Then cut out a little piece of the extra string. Take that little bit of string and tie it around the center of one end of the oval. This will make sure that you don't lose the middle of the base of your tail. Once you finish that, now you can cut the opposite end apart. Bigger scissors might have been a good idea. This is where the base of the tail starts to take shape. We are going to make a four strand braid. To do this, simply braid the sections on the right like you would a normal braid. Then take the fourth strand and move it under and into the middle. Braid. Move under and into the middle. Now tighten. Make sure to tighten your braid several times throughout the process. Once you get to the end of your braid, take an old rubber band or hair tie and wrap it around the bottom of your braid. Like so. When you have the bottom of your braid secured, you should cut off all the extra fringe. For this part, you'll need your base, a pair of scissors, some thread, a needle, and your fluffs. Oh, and a picture to look off of. I'm looking at a picture of an Eastern Timberwolf's tail. Let's start sewing the fluffs onto our base. I like to work from the bottom to the top. All right, grab your thread and put it through the eye of the needle. Now pull the thread out so that it doubles up. You want your thread to be strong so that it doesn't break. If you like, you can triple it to make it even stronger. Make a large knot where the two ends of your thread meet. Then stick your needle through the knot of your fluff. Make sure that your needle goes through the loop that was made by your thread. It isn't quite clear that I did that, but that's what will securely attach your string to the fluff. Now you just simply sew your fluff onto the base. Pass the needle through the base and pull it taut. Again, pass the needle through the knot of your fluff. Now pass your needle through the previous fluff, then through the base, as well as through your newest fluff. Then pull tight.
When you get to the end of your string, you want to anchor it off. Do this by passing the needle through the loop of your string. See how my needle is going through the loop? Now pull tight. For the tip of the tail, you won't be able to sew directly to the base because there isn't a base to sew onto. What you will need to do is sew onto the fluffs directly. Just keep sewing your new fluffs onto the old fluffs and as you go around the perimeter, tighten the fluffs together to make a cone shape. You can see me sewing my final fluffs onto the tip of my tail. By adding a few extra fluffs to the tip, this will give the tail a nice point. See, isn't that nice? From here, you'll just want to keep continuing to sew the fluffs onto the base. Keep working your way to the top. Once you have reached the top of your base, then take about 4 inches of elastic and slide it through the loop. Match up the ends of your elastic and sew them together. After you have sewn the two ends of your elastic together, then hide the seam by sliding it to the inside of the loop. Continue sewing your fluffs onto the base until you can no longer see the base. Yay! We have finally finished our tail! It was a lot of work, but it was totally worth it. All there is really to do now is just to brush it out a little. And then turn it upside down. Give it a little shake. Wow, that's pretty fluffy. Turn it right side up, shake it again. And there you have it. We've made a wolf tail. <laughs> and just in time for Aeson. Well, I had a really great time showing you how I make these tails. And I hope you have a great time making your very own tail. So, um, until next time, this is Zulala, and I will talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.